Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. You may have caught my video highlight of the Adobe Media Player a few weeks ago, and in that video I mentioned that you had to have the Adobe Air runtime in order to run the Adobe Media Player. Thumbs up on both of them. Uh, this is Adobe's, um, I guess, entry into the field of widgets, although it's a bigger idea than just, you know, having these cute little applications on the desktop. I mean, developers are able to create a, a very rich or potentially rich experience and have it run cross-platform. Uh, generally speaking, at least on the machines I've tried them on, uh, Air mm, is not quite optimized for performance yet, uh, but the apps that are available uh, that will run on this Air platform uh, that runs inherently cross-platform, uh, they're starting to get there. And I made uh, kind of a flip comment the other day, as I'm prone to do. Uh, I said, you know, there's just really no good Air apps out there. I hadn't really gone and looked. I mean, I, I guess I had a couple already, but didn't really, you know, put two and two together. I just don't hear of a lot of new Air apps, uh, well, at least on a, a, a semi-regular basis, and didn't really, you know, think much of it. And I was like, you know, there's got to be something good out there. So I found about five or six what I believe are decent Air apps that I don't mind having on my computer and that you may not mind having on your computer as well. So I'm just going to run you through them. Uh, I'll, I'll read the links, but of course, if you want to click any link, in, you can search the web, or I'll have them all linked on this corresponding blog post that I'll go with this video on my blog at chris.perillo.com. The first two apps are at blog.everythingflex.com and the first app is called Photo Booth and Photo Booth is still a little rough around the edges but the functionality is in place. Um, you can use it to immediately send a snapshot that's taken from your webcam directly to Flickr. So if you use Flickr like I do, you can use this. And in fact, like I said, it's a little rough around the edges, but it does work. I can change uh, some basic effects. In fact, I can go negative, which I've done before sepia. I can go red. Ooh, see, I'm a red Chris there. And then I press the little, mm, I guess it's a camera button. Listen to this. That's hideous. Hideous sound effects. And then I can press the button and send that photo directly to Flickr. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Asteroids, I guess. But anyway, uh, it's a very functional application. Small, doesn't do much, but it does something that I've never seen any other application do. So that's nice to have. He's also got iSpy, and that's like a motion detector software that, you know, again, you know, uses air to connect to your webcam. You point your webcam at, you know, an area and it will only take a snapshot when it detects movement. So, you know, if you have people that constantly come in your room and you say, you were in my room, weren't you? And they're like, no. Well, you can set up iSpy and have it automatically snap a picture anytime there's movement. So you can prove right or wrong whether or not people are entering your domain. So there's the first couple. The next one uh, is something that is better than the official app that was released for this service. I've mentioned Pandora before. I love Pandora. It's a great project. Uh, I have a Pandora sometimes running in the background, uh, although you know very quietly on the live stream. And uh, if you if you never heard of Pandora, Pandora.com, it's awesome. I mentioned it in conjunction with the Songbird video that we did the other day. Well, Pandora officially released an Air app, but it sucks. I mean, it is bad. It's just horrible. Like all they did was wrap their web page into an Air application, and everyone's going like, ah. And so no one likes it. So there's another application called Pandora Boy. That's one word. You can search the web and find it. Pandora Boy is the way Pandora should have done it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Pandora.com is going to be contacting Pandora Boy and working out some kind of deal and taking what he's done. And he's really tightened the experience and made it a good experience, a clean experience. The ad is still running right there. Uh, or at least some kind of ad, and the controls are available. So instead of running Pandora in a browser window, I can control it through keyboard shortcuts or at least uh, change stations, a quick mix. I can access it all from my regular old uh, Mac OS X menu, but of course there's a corresponding uh, Windows version as well, because remember, cross-platform. 
Uh, so Pandora Boy, it's great. Even if you've never heard of Pandora before, you want to check that out. The next one is a must-have if you use Google Reader to catch up on all your feeds. I've talked about feeds before. I've talked about Google Reader before. You can subscribe to my blog feed. You can subscribe to my podcast feed. You can subscribe to my YouTube feed. And that way, instead of visiting the website to find out whether I've updated or not, it will get pushed to you using these, well, essentially web documents called feeds. And this Air application called Read Air will connect to your Google Reader account and let you browse your Google Reader feeds directly from your desktop. Huh? Now, the I think Mac users will appreciate it more because the developer uh, created it in a very OS ten like interface, a very Aqua esque interface. Uh, but it's it's quick enough, and if if you like Google Reader, but you want the convenience of browsing your feeds on the desktop, it's got the familiar tripeen interface. And again, Google Reader's free. Uh, Air is free. Read Air is free. You got nothing to lose if you like Google Reader, or if you've been looking for a way to have Google Reader but also have desktop. Read Air, the only way I've seen uh, to uh, make this even remotely possible. And the next one, it actually two. Uh, these were uploaded by someone named Quentin. Uh, the first one is something called Shrinkomatic, and Shrinkomatic is a resizer, like a photo resizer, and uh, you can, you know, set size limits. Uh, you can set a ratio, auto rename it, uh, change the output format, and then just drag and drop pictures there or browse. So you can you can do multiples at a time. Shrink dash o dash matic exactly. And he's also developed something that I really think is cool, something called WebCut. And what WebCut will do, and that's spelled W-E-B-K-U-T, is it'll, uh, you give it a URL, like you could give it chris.perillo.com or youtube.com, and it will snapshot it. And you can you can get just a, the the current view of the window, the full pane. So let's say you want to print off a, like a long web page. How are you going to do that? You could use WebCut. It will do the whole thing for you. It can save it out as a PDF. One seamless PDF. It's an image that would be wrapped inside the PDF. But WebCut is free. I mean, well, well, so is Shrinkomatic. Pretty much everything that I've mentioned to this point isn't going to cost you a thing, and they're great applications. Uh, the next one isn't free, but you have to sign up for an account. It's something called Clever, that's spelled C-L-E-V-R. And what it'll do, this little Air application, once you've registered, will help you create uh, panoramas, like stitch together uh, separate photos to create a single panorama. So pretty clever, I guess. Uh, but I know the registration might uh, throw a few people off. The next one's going to be good for all you Craigslist addicts. It's called CL Desktop. And I, I tried it, and the UI is still, I mean, it's better than Craigslist.org is, but it, it's a different way of navigating the information that's on Craigslist. And I think if you're navigating or looking for things to buy, it'll pull in the photos. It's just a different way of browsing the indices on Craigslist. So cldesktop.com. If they cleaned up the UI just a little more, I, I mean, like, made it, like, really shine, I'd be way more impressed. Functionality is impressive, but they could make this so much more if they just put a little bit of effort into the spit and polish around the application. But it's a great experience. Uh, I know I'd likely uh, be using it next time I wanted to go and, and browse Craigslist for, well, they've got a, in the screenshot example, they've got uh, all the cars listed. And normally you'd have to click through each particular item and uh, keep click, click, click. This will make it easier because it pulls in the information and gives it to you in a single window experience. But they just kind of lack the polish that it's, these other uh, Air apps have really taken the time to, to think about. Of course, there's a, a multitude of uh, Twitter applications built on Air. I know people love Twirl, T-W-H-R-L. I don't know how you spell these darn things. I think Alert Thingy. No kidding. That's the name of it. Alert Thingy is the name of a, another Adobe Air application that connects to your friend feed account or your Twitter account. I don't know. So there's a lot of Air applications out there. Uh, they're easy to install, click. Tell it where you want to install it. They're easy to uninstall. You just delete it. And Adobe Air is going to be around for well, for a, a, a long time. They just 
the other day released version 1.1 with uh, some fixes. I'm not expecting major performance increases until like a 2.0 time frame. But, you know, for the first time out, I think Adobe's done a pretty good job. And certainly some of these developers have been creative enough and kind enough to release these applications. I'm now, I will tell you, looking for amazing Air apps. I wouldn't be surprised if someone creates a way to have, I don't know what we'd call it, like an ego app or something. Like to be able to put, I would love to be able to put uh, the chat room and the live video and my latest tweets and my latest friend feed posts or all my latest blog posts or all my latest comments, my feed stuff inside a, a very tight, cleanly designed Air application. Because that way you could, I could just say, well, yeah, you can watch my feed or just download the, the app that will run cross-platform. But it has to be designed very well. And that's the thing is if it's not designed well at all, then it's like, eh, eh, no one wants to use it. I wouldn't even want to use it. If something isn't designed well, I I'm sorry. It has to be really good or amazing functionality-wise for me to be able to pick it up. Uh, if, if, if it's not designed well, it's just, eh, I don't want to run it. Sorry, it's just the kind of guy that I am. My email address is chris at com. Maybe you've developed an Air app you'd like to share with the world, and, you know, as long as it looks good, I I'm, I'm not kidding about that. Got to look good, especially if it's going to run here. I know I don't look good, but it, this is my desktop. Just because I don't look good doesn't mean this shouldn't look good. In fact, that's all the more reason this has to look good. You're also welcome to join us in the chat room. We've got uh, hundreds of people uh, typically talking tech, uh, finding these uh, free finds on the web. You know, whether it be, you know, for Mac, Windows, Linux, cross-platform, web-based, desktop-based, software, hardware, it doesn't matter. We just love this world that we live in today. With access to the internet, we pretty much can do anything. And I can stream live video, which is what I'm doing right now as I'm recording this video. I'm recording live to tape. Of course, it's not so much a tape as it is an MP4 file. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast. You can watch it on YouTube. And you can stop by the chat room. Watch the live video for a little while and say hi. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.